Hi, friends and new friends. I'm Tao of Satoshi, and you're watching Cash Alternative TV. Well, today I was happy to have a follow-up conversation with Scott Farnsworth. Uh, you may remember him from my last interview. He's the gentleman who started the Dash Aerosports proposal. And he's uh, quite ambitious with his goals, and uh, so far he's been able to accomplish quite a bit. And it's only been three weeks since I've talked to him. So here's my interview without any further ado. I hope you enjoy. So uh, welcome back to the show, Scott. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate you uh, inviting me on. And, you know, it's been an exciting three weeks since we last talked. Been uh, very busy. Okay, so yeah, that's the point of the show. Uh, I have no idea what you've been up to, and uh, I'm sure the citizens of Dash Nation are probably wondering what is it that uh, you're up to and how you're progressing on the things that we were talking about on the last episode. So uh, why don't you give us a rundown of what you've been up to, and we'll uh, talk about it. Well, it's been an exciting time. Uh, we've tried to reach out to some key players. Of course, there's many more out there that we need to talk to, but some key players in the Dash Nation, not only the Dash Nation, but people that are associated with it everywhere from ATMs to, uh, to the different graphics and news agencies such as yourself and Dash Force News. So um, right off the bat, you know, we, we basically, we, we got funded, but we were so confident and um, excited about starting our representation of Dash that we actually uh, pre-positioned our jet into location at Reno. So within two days of being funded, instead of sitting in the hangar and trying to put a bunch of stuff together, we held off on producing t-shirts, uh, which are being produced now, but we held off on t-shirts, team shirts, team uniforms, flight suit, helmet, all that, because I saw an opportunity to uh, go straight into the first Reno event that wasn't scheduled, but I saw an opportunity, so we went ahead and took it. Uh, not to be too much of a Top Gun reference there, but anyways. <laughs> so we headed out to Reno, Nevada, and we participated in what's called Pylon Race School. It's a, a, a formation and racing instructional course for the rookies. Now, I have been racing for over five years now, so I didn't exactly have to participate, but they invite the veterans there because it puts more planes on the course. For those that aren't familiar with the Reno National Air Races, it's the only course on the planet that you can race a jet at 50 feet, 500 miles an hour. And guess what? You're not going against the clock. You're going against other jets, very NASCAR style. Um, so we have multiple jets on the course. So the pilots have to be able to not only fly their jet low, close to the ground, because if you go above 200 feet, you're actually disqualified. So you're supposed to be right at 50 feet. I like to stay right at 50 feet. Uh, and if you get too high, you'll actually get disqualified. So you have to be very comfortable under high pressure situations. And then on top of that, you also have to, uh, you have to be able to handle somebody else flying their jet very close to you. So we bring the rookies out, the veterans that do show up, uh, I would say we kind of push the rookies around a little bit just to see how they'll react. Cause we want to see how they react, uh, in front of us, in front of the other people that are participating out there before we put 250,000 people in stands. And like we've discussed before, uh, you know, NBC Sports Live Television. So it's a qualification. If they, if they participate and they qualify, uh, then they're invited. Reno is an invitational process. We have probably about a half and half washout versus success. And I guess washout's a little bit of a harsh word. Uh, we, we ask about half the class that usually shows up that we appreciate their enthusiasm. However, maybe next year they should, you know, refine their skills and then come back out. So it's a very high stressful situation. But by participating in that, we brought out a uh, camouflage L39, which is not actually, we borrowed it from California and brought it in instead of flying our current L39 all the way from Florida. As you can imagine, that jet airplane is extremely expensive to operate on an hourly basis. So we saw an ability to save some on our budget there. So we participated, we put some cameras in the plane. Not only that, the film crew from New York City flew in um, again, on short notice because they thought that it was a good lead into the uh, to the show that we've been talking about uh, regarding the reality actually it's better termed a docu series about yeah, something I want to get into later for sure oh yeah so uh, I've been called and I do buy and sell airplanes all around the world and it's kind of that gas monkey garage style but they basically told me you know Scott 
you, talking to you, we found the storyline here, and that is, I'm Scott Farnsworth. I'm sponsored by the fastest digital currency on the planet, and I will be the fastest athlete on the planet. That's it. So they're going to follow my road to being the fastest athlete. If you think about it, the military jets and so forth, they can go faster than my jet, but they're not athletes. They're military. They're backed by the government. This is 100% my baby. Um, I started the race team, you know, several years back, and now I'm in the running to become the fastest athlete on the planet at 50 feet and over 500 miles an hour. So it's exciting. I think we have some great content. They actually followed us, uh, my team lead, Keith Holt, and I. He's on Slack as well. Uh, he's kind of a, for, uh, a seamless experience for our spectators. I remain the face of the team and hopefully um, a seamless integration with all the different customers and spectators that we work with. But uh, uh, Keith plays a big role in our team. So after the participation in Reno, we actually went out to San Francisco with the wives and did some wine country and so forth. So they followed us with that. It's a nice background and storyline. So we're going to be excited with that. So um, for, the, for the viewers that are watching, uh, who is he on Slack? Uh, Dash. He hasn't been on for a while. <laughs> is he race ops? Is that is that him? That's it. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, Sorry. I race curious. ops. So yeah. he's on there so that he can monitor what's going on. If I'm, you know, doing something and um, and a question comes up, he'll bring it to my attention so that I'm the one voice answering and responding instead of you know having conflicting statements of any any way. Um, but yeah, I've known him since I was 15 years old. So we've been. We've been flying planes around the planet for, for quite some time. So he was out there at Reno as well. So we have, the, we have the film crew, but we really used it as an opportunity to integrate. And I had a, a, a meeting with the president of Reno Air Race Associations. And I'll be quite frank and to be completely candid with you, I sat down and gave away the farm. And he kept asking, well, what do you want in, what do you want in return? You know, do you want us to pay you for that event? Do you want us to pay you for that experience? I said, I don't want anything in return other than exposure. My whole goal to sit at this table is to make sure that Dash and Dash's logo is supported and represented at these air races as big and bold as you will let me. At that time, because we're now providing a virtual reality experience at Reno, um, we've already had, well, I'll get back to the virtual reality experience. So they're providing us with the upfront absolute prime location. And I have something coming out that I've already talked to Ryan Taylor about, but I haven't disclosed it yet because I have to have a big reveal. I mean, that's part of the fun, right? Is awesome. shocking, shocking our sponsors. So we have something to place right in front of the cameras and as, as front and center in front of the spectators as possible. Uh, that will bring people into what we're calling the Dash Aerosports Pavilion. Um, the ATM provider in Florida, which is Byte Federal, we've already integrated with them uh, to work on having an ATM present at the pavilion. And prearranged is at least one location at all our events. Um, might it be at a casino? Might it be at a restaurant? At least when somebody comes in, we can say, okay, this is what Dash is. This is the wallet. Now, right there, you can go ahead and add Dash to your wallet. But even after this, here's some information on where you can find information, uh, the different information like Dash Force News, um, some different outlets, dash.org. You can find out more about that. And even when we're not here, that ATM is going to be over at the casino, the uh, taco shop, or wherever it might be. And after we leave, you still have an ATM that you can go put your cash in and get Dash in return. So we have a, we have a pretty good uh, we, you know, market penetration plan. And we're excited to work with them. They definitely sound like they share our values regarding uh, digital currency. Um, so that's the ATM side. Again, like I said, I've, I've reached out to Ryan Taylor, had a great conversation with him. I can't tell you how impressed I am with his integrity and his sense of uh, protection of the users of Dash. So it's, uh, it's very motivating for me as Dash Aerosports lead to uh, represent such a, a following of uh, – of individuals in the Dash community. So by talking with uh, Ryan Taylor, I believe that we've 
we found our roadmap and aligned our marketing ideas with the core team. And that's the primary purpose of that conversation. And uh, I've, of course, let him know that when I'm in Reno, I'd love to meet in person and, and talk with them. What's funny is as I was having that conversation, I was in the Phoenix airport we had just, I had brought out my mechanics to review another jet, a potential race jet, not for this race, but you know, as I always say, if you're only thinking about the current race, you already lost the next race. So, so I had my mechanics in Phoenix uh, tearing apart a uh, potential purchase. We didn't end up purchasing that, that jet, uh, didn't meet our needs. Uh, so I was talking to Ryan and, and he specifically said, hey, I'm like 10 minutes away from you as my plane was boarding. So I missed the opportunity to meet one-on-one, -on -one, but I look forward to uh, going back out and, and doing that. Yeah, uh, I agree with you there. Uh, Ryan's definitely an asset to Dash. Uh, oh, yes. I, I speak to him quite a bit too. And yeah, it's uh, definitely somebody who, it's like a trusting hand at the wheel. You know what I mean? So, that, you know what? You just described it perfectly. That's exactly right. You know, uh, we're all screen names and, and conversations on Slack or the Dash forum, but to actually have a voice, kind of like what we're doing right now. After our life, last conversation, you know, I was talking to my team lead, Keith, and I said, you know, it was just a nice conversation. Even after what we, we talked about, after we turned off the air, you and I were talking and sharing ideas. You know, I'm a, I'm a race pilot from a military background, so I have a very structured uh, set of people that are in my life, you know, and so it's nice for me to be able to communicate with other people like-minded, uh, you know, desires to see how things will change and how we can affect the world in a better way. All right, let's switch gears for a second. I'm going to comment on your shirt. It's uh, yeah. quite, a, quite a nice shirt, custom made, I guess, or do yes. other people have it? It's custom made? Uh, my team's wearing these right now, uh, and my kids, of course, you know, so <laughs> once we go into a, a into a team, you know, everybody gets on the bandwagon. Even my 11 year old is, he's been paid uh, $17 US dash to wash my truck. <laughs> or 17, yes. Are you so, at home, Scott? Is he around? Maybe you want to say hi? <laughs> he's actually at jujitsu right now. And it's oh. funny, I've been on the road for the last five weeks. This is my first weekend at home. So I am enjoying some time with the family. My my 13 year old daughter and my 11 year old son, uh, I was able to catch their jujitsu tur tournament on Sunday. And there's some things that they needed to refine. So they're at the gym right now with their coach doing their lessons, getting better at what they do. Awesome. So you, you've been uh, a Dash evangelist for a while now. Uh, how is your team reacting to uh, the Dash Aerosports concept? Well, the Dash Aerosports concept is uh, <laughs> what's – I actually wanted to talk about this. So, like, for instance, my personal Facebook, of course, I announced that I'm being sponsored and, rep and I'll be representing Dash. It's like out of the woodwork. Out of the woodwork, people just started saying, oh, Digital currency, can you come over for dinner? We're go my wife and I are going to dinner tonight at 6.30, and to talk about Dash and how they can get involved with it, uh, they're going to be serving us beef medallions and, uh, and asparagus. So I'm, I'm not only am I making sponsorship off of Dash, I'm actually being fed by Dash, or at least by evangelizing Dash at this point. So we're excited about that uh, very much. You know, it's uh, the, the – I think it's a match made in heaven. For what I do on my focus on speed, uh, I think the Dash sponsorship is perfect. And besides just the semblance of speed and a jet airplane and Dash, which I hope will just be synonymous with one and the other, uh, it's something that I believe in. And it's something that I was teaching my kids before I ever got involved and made a proposal. Even before I even thought about making a proposal, I was investing in Dash. Uh, let me correct myself. I was purchasing Dash and uh, and Bitcoin. So it, it's just, I'm excited every day I wake up. And if you look at the list of things that we're doing in three weeks, you'll see that I'm waking up every single day. You know, this is not my hobby. This is not something that I'm just doing for fun. Yeah, it's great time for me. I love flying jet airplanes, but I also like influencing how things are going in the on, in the planet, and I think this this is a true calling. So, well, in, in Dash Nation, I want to get the the best and brightest people, the people that have the most enthusiasm, and uh, I'm really glad that you're on board. You know, because you lead by example with your enthusiasm and your <laughs> confidence, and uh, I think that's what we need here in Dash Nation. So, I appreciate you uh, joining us. Well, that's and 
I, I said this to Ryan Taylor. I said this to the Reno Air Race Association when they were asking me, what do you want in return for this? Now, Ryan didn't ask me that, but the Reno Air Race Association, what do you want in return? And I simply just stated, everything that I've been successful in life at, I've started with passion. Fortune follows passion every time. It just doesn't matter. I, I used the analogy on the phone the other day that, that show where the guy makes a, a tree house. Imagine when he came to his parents and said, Mom, Dad, for a living, I'm going to build tree houses. They were like, what, am I, what, are, what did we do wrong? What did we do wrong? That man travels the world now and builds million-dollar tree houses. So if you start with passion, your fortune will follow. And that's really the, the zone that I'm in right now is I'm doing something that I'm absolutely passionate. I'm not actually just doing one thing. I'm getting to, like you said, evangelize Dash to everybody that will listen, but I'm also getting to do that through my medium, my trade, my skill. You know, if I was a dancer and I danced for the last 20 years, I'd want to dance in front of people and, and try and promote what I believe in. If I was a musician, I'd write a song. If I was a sculptor, I'd, I'd sculpt a big D, you know, but instead I'm an aviation enthusiast. I'm a race pilot. I'm an aerobatic pilot. And that's what I can utilize to share Dash with the world. And you hit the nail on the head right there, which is the Dash Nation concept. You know, everybody's good at doing what they're good at doing at, or good at doing. And uh, they can contribute to the success of Dash in their own way. And that's yes. exactly what I want to promote with Dash Nation. So you're doing it. I'm doing it through like talking to people, uh, you know, organizing the Dash Nation Slack. And you're doing it through what you do best. And somebody else would do yes. it through what they do best. And it's really good to see this movement coming together and everybody doing their part to move everything forward. So and I'm that's, really happy. And that's so, you know, obviously now I've become, I'm out in the open. This is who I am. This is what I believe in. And as I open myself up to the public and the community, not just the Slack, not just the Dash community, there's people in my own neighborhood that are coming to talk to me and say, okay, tell me more about this. I've been interested. And all they need is a familiar face and, and an ex explanation of how it works. Um, yeah. Sorry, lost my train of thought on that one. I'm actually, I'm, I'm thinking about all the things. I wanted to go back to the Reno now. Okay. Uh, on the Reno situation, um, so we, we've talked about the three hours of, of television coverage, and that's huge. Well, through my conversation, uh, the president of the Reno Air Race Association, when I simply made that statement about, you know, fortune follows passion, he offered to me, knowing that we were doing the virtual reality experience and we have cameras in the planes. Now, the promotional video that I showed Dash, I showed to them as well to explain to them about Dash and who the primary sponsor is and how well that sponsorship lines up with jet racing. Um, and from the cockpit footage, first thing he said was, why do we not have this on NBC Sports? This down low, fast, intense flying where there's almost a visceral reaction. And I said, is that what you want? I have a whole camera crew with me that'll put cameras in all the planes. Well, what do you want for that? I said, all I want is a little logo right on the bottom right hand side that says dash for all in cockpit footage. And they agreed to it. No money exchanging hands. We already have the cameras in our budget regarding placing them in other people's planes because we, for social media, you know, if I have just cameras in my plane, you can't see a Dash logo jet with a wrap going around the course. So I have to put cameras in the other plane. Well, that plane might be here or there. So what we do is we put cameras through my association with friends that are also pilots. We put it between four and five cameras in four or five different airplanes at different angles. So we'll already have the footage. We need it. So we've already paid for it. So why don't we just offer it up to NBC Sports and exchange for exposure. So we agreed on that. We've moved forward on that. We, we were able to get approval from that from the board members. And that's actually moved into, I think, a much deeper relationship. Um, myself as the DASH representative and, and the Reno Air Race Association. I think the two are seamless. Everything's coming out of the DASH Aerosports budget because as we all know, Dash has raised in value. So as Dash has risen in value, I think I told you the first time we talked, I mean, I, 
I'm, I'm okay. I, I live a very comfortable life. And so as Dash rises, we add more value. We add more cameras. We add more crew. Maybe do a modification to the jet. The uh, one thing that is coming that the Dash Nation is going to definitely love uh, is supported by the rise in that in that value as well. So as it goes up, our offering goes up, and we don't just fly airplanes at the track. We, you know, we don't just fly airplanes at the air show. We're we're fully involved in business development for the Dash Nation. That's the ATMs. Um, our primary sponsors, our primary sponsors, Dash, our secondary and, and third level of sponsorship, because we do actually have agreements with that on a 12 month contract uh, to be continue being part of the team. Uh, they must integrate Dash into their into their purchase process. So we have a fine watch uh, manufacturer from Finland that we're very excited to announce shortly, but they'll be accepting Dash as a payment system. Our parachute sponsor already, if you called him up and said, uh, if you called him up and said, I'd like to buy a parachute, he would offer it to you in credit card, cash, or dash already. That's, in, that's within three weeks of being involved. Uh, my radar, we're in conversations with them. They were our primary sponsor last year. I think we did amazing by them, and I believe they can't speak for them, but they're entering into another 12-month contract with us as a secondary sponsor, even though they're not the primary. And my goal for that is to have in-app purchases available for Dash as well. Okay, let me go back to the uh, sponsorship thing, like with the Dash logo in the in the corner. You're you're also going to include the words uh, digital cash, right? Because we had this yeah. conversation on uh, Slack, and people were saying we don't have really have the brand recognition. Yeah. We just throw our logo out there. We need to actually say what it is that we do at this what, point. What you see on my shirt is exactly what will go go on the bottom right hand side of the screen. Yes. Awesome. So cash, digital cash. I think it's. Um, I saw a statement regarding it really needs to be one and the same. And it actually, eventually I'll say, hey, you know, do you have that dash that you owe me, that kind of stuff, you know, or hey, you wanna go do this and let's let's go spend some dash today. But right now in the, in the ecosystem, we do need to use the term dash digital cash because there are other dash products, but until we become synonymous with, with just we being dash then yes dash digital cash on the wings uh you know the wings are big billboards so on the wings it'll it'll have a large dash logo with digital cash underneath and um we've been given permission by dash force news the original wrap has been revised and for instance the big d and i've talked to ryan taylor about this dash.org is a great website but for for the Utilizing the plane as a landing page at a website where somebody comes on the website, sees this really beautiful scenery, that's our airplane. But then you need to be able to go into the links and say, okay, you know, Dash 101, what is Dash? All the content needs to be easily and accessible. So we're utilizing Dash Force News's uh, website with their permission, which has already been accomplished as a portal to their website so that people can reach out and get more information. Even as we come back, as we come into an area, do an air show, do an event, as we leave, the social media pictures, the, the social media, uh, the photos on their phone, the video, will all have prominent, you know, Dash Force News or other, other products that help the Dash marketing all together. As, as Ryan Taylor said, yes, we want to we wanna support the, the uh, vendors and the businesses that support Dash. So that's my focus is to, you know, wall of coins, Dash Force News, um, Bitcoin, uh, Bitcart.io, which I haven't had a chance to discuss it with them, but if they would like to be added to the plane, that's what I'd like to do. It increases the transaction volume for, for Dash as well as it just promotes the community. Okay, so when somebody uh, looks at your website at uh, so the Reno Air Show, for example, so how, what are they going to go? Like you're going to put like a link to uh, say like a landing page that has your airplane on it, and then from there they can go at different links? Like how is that going to work? Well, for instance, the, the plane is actually the landing page. When somebody takes a picture, so in a high contrast, let's say black, uh, black base with a white contrasting uh, website address or anything like that, it's, it's visible for them to sit there, look at the picture and go, oh, hey, 
you know, I want to learn more about this. And this is what the gentleman was talking about on the news or on the television or in person at the air show as well. Once you go on to Dash Aerosports, which the website we, we own, uh, it will be built out, same thing. It, the initial page will be very catchy, some really great video. Hey, come to dasharrowsports.com. You'll have some great video, cockpit, outside of the cockpit footage, but you'll have links to the various links that are on our plane. They'll, they'll, they'll sync up, yes. So you should do something like, uh, okay, so you've enjoyed the fastest sport in existence. Now try the fastest digital cash in existence, you know, something like that. Oh, yeah. You know, just as just That's exactly it. It's all about the speed, exactly. It's all about the speed and the ease of use. Um, I mean, we've all we've all had confirmations take too much time on other digital currencies and dashes. When I transfer, it, it's basically instantaneous, no problem, without any problems. Okay, I like the fact that you're leveraging the things that you do uh, and to get Dash some more exposure, especially that NBC one. I have a feeling that's going to be huge. It's going to lead to a big spike in interest, I, I would imagine. Well, and that's, I know it's hard to get all the content out in a proposal, but I was trying to convey that is we don't just fly around a crowd in an airplane. We get out of the plane, we interact with the crowd, we discuss our sponsors. We have events like the virtual reality experience that brings people to us. I hate the concept of when somebody walks by, you have that barker thing where you're trying to sell, sell, sell. Instead, with like the virtual reality experience, we offer that no, at free of no charge, but through free of no charge, when you come to us, so what is this? Well, you know, this is a virtual reality experience. We're sponsored by Dash Aerosports, or sorry, by Dash. And this is what Dash is. There's three, three cockpits in the virtual reality experience, and there's usually about 20 people waiting. So at the same time, you can have somebody talking to them. And it's, it's you know, we have the videos, but we also have four or five people in the pavilion talking about what, what our sponsors do. And not only that, by the way, if you'd like, this, this fine finish timepiece is, we're displaying that as well. And they take Dash and, you know, you can, if you pay for, pay for the, the timepiece with Dash, you get, you get a 10% discount. So we, we do a lot of co-marketing. Uh, the way we look at it for our little pavilion, and when I say little, it's actually not that little. So I run my aerosports team much like a retail store, you know, um, when you have a KFC and a Pizza Hut together, they're trying to maximize their square footage. So I, through our budget, rent out the space. Yeah, we're gonna go do our air show, but we gotta bring our plane back to somewhere. Now, if I bring my plane and I stick it out on the flight line, that's free of charge. But as soon as I come back into the spectator area, it's a rented out space, just like everything else. So in that space, I try and pack as much, uh, you know, as much, uh, feedback as I can from it. So we have we have the my radar, we have the dash, we have the timepieces. We actually are into conversations regarding uh, a eyewear company that again will be on Amazon, but through their website they'll be able to take dash as long as they agree with us. Awesome. So we're we're in full promotion, but also product development and and brand development as well. And when I say brand development, we're not trying to change the brand. We're just trying to push it into as many areas as possible. Sounds great. So um, what's going on with the uh, reality TV show that you were talking about? Um, well, right now they're actually, I'm supposed to be having a, uh, a conference call soon regarding the, we did take footage uh, of of the pylon race school we went ahead and started developing you know the airplane to airplane footage so i'm waiting for that because of course that's the exciting part the storyline of who i am i don't know how exciting that is hopefully it is but well you know um we're talking about purchasing another jet the individual that i'm purchasing the jet from is a uh former MiG-23 Cuban pilot that defected from Cuba to Key West. And a great story is that, so he defected in a Cuban MiG-23, and then he was trying diplomatically to get his wife and two kids out of Cuba. Uh, and 
Fidel Castro had publicly stated that his wife and kids would never see him again. So he commandeered, and it depends who you ask, if he borrowed it or stole it, commandeered a small twin-engine Cessna, flew at wave height levels, landed on a highway, and extricated his family from Cuba in 1992. So he's wow. been on Jay Leno. He's been on the Jay Leno show. He's he's actually he has a book written. So it's one of those things where we weren't expecting that storyline to come out, but the crew wants to come down from New York, and he and I will fly together because he also does air shows. So it goes into that mentorship where, yeah, I, I've I've done a lot in airplanes, but I'm always the type that I'm willing to sit there and have an experienced pilot show me a little bit of what he can do and try and learn from them as well. Awesome. So uh, is there anything else you'd like to add before we let you go? Um, so we talked about the ATMs and how we're integrating that into our, into our overall uh, market penetration. Um, we've also been talking to the gentlemen that are doing the, uh, the jet airplane commercial proposal. I can, they're absolutely phenomenally professional. Uh, they understand the idea of not only uh, uh, brand, uh, bringing out the brand, but also the protection of the brand. And they've been very polite in requesting my permission and utilizing uh, different aspects of our team. I've given my full support to them to include, we'll provide the 3D model. I know that his team's very, uh, very uh, capable, but if they need a 3D model, we will be utilizing that for our website. We already own the 3D model, so we can send that over to them. Um, let's see. Uh, we revised the wrap to really start increasing not only Dash, but really the uh, the proponents of Dash, both you know the news and content providers as well as the different services uh, that support Dash. Um, we talked about the NBC Sports. Sorry, I'm running down a mental list here. Yeah, don't leave anything out. It sounds exciting. Yeah, well, we've been very, it's been a busy three weeks. Like I said, I've been on the road to uh, trying to get this organized. We talked about the pavilion, uh, prior sponsors getting on board with Dash. I mean, it's, it's hard not to get on board with the idea. I think anybody that is a free thinker and can, you know, see a little bit of the future sees where everything's going. So to get involved at such a, such a, you know, beginning, uh, that, for instance, like my radars in app purchases, I think that would be not only on a monetary side, but just the publicity alone for both Dash and my radar. You know, if we had a, a app guru website that Dash and my radar are uh, one in the not one in the same, but promoting each other, that works for everybody. It's that cross marketing potential. Um, so yeah, that takes us, we have Oshkosh, which is coming up in July. We're, we're gonna make sure that the wrap on the jet is there because of the timing uh, with the funding versus when we would have to secure the spot. The jet will be out on the flight line and I'll be uh, doing formation flights with other, other pilots and so forth. We won't be in the show, but we'll be at the show. The Extreme Air is still in conversations with, uh, we were looking at the Ford Pavilion, and then we we're also looking at the direct entry to the gate of the air show with the uh, Extreme Air logoed in Dash logos. I have a new flight suit that's being uh, produced. It actually now has a lot of white and blues to align with our overall marketing uh, ideas here. Um, so we'll be at Oshkosh and then from there we have just some small events in August but we'll really be focusing on getting into Reno the first week of September and uh, the National Air Race is only four days for the uh, spectators but we have to be out there for a week before they sequester us out there so that we have you know, warm ups, training, we have all our FAA briefings, airspace, uh, it's death by briefing. So but very few flights in a day, but a lot of briefings. And then, you know, of course, after after the four day event, we have to close up shop, pack everything up and get ourselves back to Florida. And during that time on the travel out, I've already extended the invitation for us to come by Texas for the Dash Force News, and they're on our on our route and provide some VIP rides for some journalists or directors of Dash Force News 
to provide content to the community on what we're doing. And Phoenix is on the way, so the invitation is there to the Dash core team as well. Uh, our budget at current levels should allow for two VIP, two VIP rides at both locations. And then once we get into the Reno Air Races, I look forward to seeing everybody with the Dash, uh, Dash Nation come out, enjoy themselves. They'll be treated, as I said in the proposal, like VIPs. Um, we'll be able to take pictures in and out of the jet. And if we can, you know, at the budget stage where it's at, we can probably raffle off, no cost, but raffle off to anybody that is on for instance, I'd like to narrow it down instead of just having a wallet on their phone. You know, maybe some everybody that's on the on the Slack can send us a, uh, you know, some. I haven't figured out the details, but I'd like to offer up a ride, one ride in the extreme and one ride in the jet for any you know Dash Nation Slack user. Nice, nice. So, do you have any kind of? It's it's. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, it's actually, you know, I'm like offering up the rides. This isn't anything unusual. This is, if I was sponsored by Ford Motor Company or Geico, the, the, the uh, executives that come to the race and hang out in the, chalet, in the chalet with catering, this is very typical, is we give VIP rides because, you know, in Dash, it's a little bit different because the Dow is really who we, who we work for. So we have to become inventive, but... For instance, my radar, the the COO for my radar, which by the way, uh, Brad Anderson, if you ever watch this, has pulled more G's than anybody else in my plane that I've given a ride to. He was a trooper. So uh, the my radar COO did a, uh, a extreme air VIP ride with us. The uh, head of marketing for Strong Parachutes did a VIP ride with us last year. And what it does is it builds team. And in the Dash Nation, if we can get some kind of free raffle going, we haven't worked out the details, but it'll be something for the community to rally behind. And some lucky winners, at least two, will uh, experience the Dash Aero Sports from the cockpit. I hope they can keep their cookies inside. We'll make sure that we bring around, bring some nice little baggies for them too. So <laughs> that's always that's always the potential is that it, you know sometimes we like to do a little this or that, but sometimes you just need to go for a nice smooth flight over the mountaintops and look at the scenery. Yeah, it understand. probably depends on the the type of person you're taking into. If they're like a young kid and excited, you probably do something yes. a little bit more. But if it's an older gentleman, you might want to take it easy a little bit. You know. Well, that's that's true, and then there's some older gentlemen that will put me to sleep in the G forces. As you get older, your arteries get a little bit uh, a little bit tighter, and believe it or not, that actually allows you to pull more G's. So you think the young studs are always the ones that can pull more G's? It's not. As you get older, your arteries get a little bit tighter. So oh, okay. there's, there's physiological, you know, constraints on everybody. <laughs> All right, so when do we have, like, do you have any estimate of when we can see the uh, product, uh, your plane and your flight suits and everything decked out in Dash? Well, right now, you know, I, I don't stitch flight suits. The flight suit is not with me. It is being embroidered. The idea is, and the wrap is being produced, the base of the wrap. And uh, I think you guys are going to really enjoy what we're doing as far as the base of the wrap. And then we'll be adding the logos for the different, like I said, the different supporters of Dash on top of that. So my goal is obviously we have to be in Oshkosh uh, July 23rd. So it'll be before July 23rd. But what I'd like to do is have my professional photographer come out and do it the right way. Some really impressive, you know, uh, what we call the hero shots where I'm standing there with the helmet in the flight suit in front of Dash's new fighter jet and, uh, you know, with the clouds and the sunshine in the background. So we'll, we'll make it come, uh, we'll come, we'll come to reality, but we're going to do it the right way and, uh, have a quality product. I, as you can probably tell with the watches, the, uh, sorry, the, uh, timepieces and the professional eyewear, we're aligning Dash with quality products. Dash is, by far, in my opinion, the absolute pinnacle of digital currency. It's a quality product for our customers. And so we're making sure that we represent it at the highest levels. Any other brand association, um, I will make sure that it's aligned with only the top quality products. We don't do anything um, second. 
I think I've covered that before. Take a dash it, to number one, baby. That's that's right. Dash the number one, and the people that are are joining the Dash Aerosport team need to be number one, and they have to have the uh, the top shelf quality that Dash does as well. All right. So, do you have any advice for anybody watching this, uh, the Dash Nation people, uh, how to share in your confidence in uh, discussing Dash with their surrounding people, like people in their communities? This might sound weird, but um, just talk about it. Open yourself up. You know, we all go through our lives. We might, you know, we might be making coffee at Starbucks. We we might work at a casino. We might be in an airplane cockpit. Uh, we might be a computer programmer. We might work at the mall retail. But this might be your passion, and you might actually think that this will change the world for the better, like I do and like you do. Um, I've noticed that as I've come out and said. This is who I am. This is what I believe in. And I'm very excited to have Dash as a sponsor. People that I had no clue, short haircut, military looking guys, you know, just coming out of the woodwork and saying, hey, tell me more about this. Hey, let's get together. Let's go have a cup of coffee, you know, and, and talk about digital currency. I'd say just, just talk about it. Open yourself up. Um, it doesn't hurt to broach the subject with somebody else and you'd be amazed at how receptive people are. You know, individuals are very intelligent beings and when you come to them one-on-one -on -one and you talk about digital currency, about the flawed system that we live in and how this can change everything and it can benefit every individual, I think that it's an easy sell. Absolutely. Well, thanks for joining us, Scott. Uh, we're definitely going to keep in touch as uh, you progress with this. I'd like to have you on the show again because uh, I really enjoy talking with you. So uh, thanks one, for coming on. One more update. One more update. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah sure. sorry. So we talked about the U.S. Uh, we actually focused on the U.S. on that. Um, I had reached out or posted that we'll be – I was supposed to be going to China on the 26th. Right now it looks like the trip will be on the 2nd of July. Uh, time is getting quite constrained in July because of the Oshkosh event. Um, but the, we were supposed to go on the 26th, but we're meeting with certain government officials regarding three air shows. And as important as we think we are, the government officials in China are a little bit more important. So we have to adapt to their schedule. So we have, uh, we didn't get to go over on the 26th. We're looking at July 2nd through the 7th uh, in China to negotiate those. But we're also talking about is uh, ATM market penetration idea to, to China as well, where, where we attend a Chinese event, a plane must, plane will be provided for us, but the plane must be logoed in Dash. I must represent Dash excuse me. And also I'd like to, we've talked about this with uh, Byte Federal about providing uh, ATMs there as well as obviously leaving ATMs in location there after we leave. Hmm. So a bit of a seeding process. And then later on down the schedule, which would be a whole nother conversation is uh, we've been asked, I was the air race champion of 2016. They have a event in Rio de Janeiro as well as Sao Paulo that will be coming in April and uh, May. And I've been asked to participate in that. So those are just some things looking out on the horizon for the U S so I figure we might as well and, and Brazil. <laughs> wow. So you're taking dash aerosports international then, eh? Yeah, that's, and that's part of the reason why in the proposal, like I said, we are absolutely a borderless marketing company because as far as the border goes, usually the government of that area is inviting my team in to participate in some type of event that they're sponsoring. So it's not like they're, they're keeping us out. They're actually inviting us in. It just so happens that I have Dash's agenda on my list of things to discuss at all times. So it's, it's working out very well. Oh, and like you said it earlier, I'm leveraging I'm leveraging all our resources as well as all our personal contacts that I've I've been flying since 15 years old. So um, I'm leveraging personal relationships to help um, you know bolster the dash position throughout the throughout the uh, world. So. And I'm confident you're making an impact. I'm trying to, that's, yeah. you know, all we can do is wake up every day, not just myself, but the person that has a dash wallet with 10 dash in it right now, when they wake up, 
they can do something. I can guarantee you that every person that's watching this video right now can wake up every day and do one thing that helps Dash. And the community and the collective effort will, will benefit us all greatly. Well said. No, thanks for being on the show, Scott. I look forward to the next time that we talk. I do too. And, you know, like I said, it was three weeks, but you can call me anytime because for me, this is kind of my little digital currency outlet, my, my Dash discussion. I always enjoy talking with you. Awesome. Thanks for, uh, thanks for being so inviting and making it easy to discuss what we're trying to do. Thank you. You're, you're welcome. I think we're both pretty passionate on the subject, so it's pretty easy to talk with you. Exactly. Like-minded individuals. <laughs> Take care. You too. Bye-bye. So that was the interview. I hope you enjoyed it. As you can see, he's been up to quite a lot and I look forward to seeing his results in the future. Uh, it's always a pleasure to talk to Scott. Well, don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you want to see more from me and Cash Alternative TV episodes. Remember, until next time, Dash is a digital alternative to cash and becoming more so every day. Bye for now.